How did we go from envisioning the stars like this to seeing the stars like this? Human beings have always looked up and been inspired by the night sky, so it's no wonder that throughout history we've tried to replicate it down here on Earth. The first versions of planetaria were tents with holes in. Light from the sun would come through the holes and a mechanism would turn the tent, replicating the movement of the stars across the night sky. The ancient Greeks used clockwork mechanisms to replicate the movements of the stars and planets, such as the Antikythera mechanism, which is the earliest known example of an analog computer. These developed over time into the modern day models of the movement of the solar system called orreries, like this one here at the National Space Center. This all came together with the introduction of the first planetarium projector, made by Zeiss in 1923. Like an orrery, motorized gears track the movements of the planets and the moon. It has a bright light at the center, which is surrounded by copper foil with tiny holes replicating the stars. We still have one of our first projectors hidden away at the back of our planetarium. It's very similar to the ones used in 1923, just a bit more compact. You can see the controls for each of the planets and the moon, and the star ball on top projected the stars onto the dome. In 1948, the first transportable planetarium was used to teach schools about astronomy and space, just like we continue to do today with our star dome. Planetaria weren't just used to show the wonders of the stars to the public in schools. They were also used to train astronauts. Cookie time was the code name for when astronauts were learning to navigate using the stars in the Moorhead Planetarium. Mercury, Gemini, Apollo and Skylab astronauts learned how to use guide stars that could align them to different areas of the sky in case their navigation system failed. They sat on a platform in the planetarium with a mock-up of the craft over their heads to demonstrate what they'd be able to see. As computers improved, so did space technology and planetaria. Progress in computing in the 80s allowed a digital system to be introduced. With computer graphics, you could not just see space, but also fly through it. Digistar was the first computer graphics-based planetarium projection and content system. Released in 1983, it was created by Evans and Sutherland. Progress in planetaria went hand in hand with improvements in computer-generated effects for films. A laboratory prototype of Digistar was used to generate the star fields and tactical displays in the 1982 sci-fi film, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. From the 90s onwards, we've enjoyed digital, full-dome planetaria. Since the opening of the National Space Center in 2001, our planetarium has been through a lot of changes, from the star ball to today's setup. It's now the largest in the UK, with an 18-meter diameter dome. The dome is painted a very specific shade of grey and has tiny holes across it to stop light from bouncing around and reflecting into the audience's eyes allowing us to experience the best and darkest blacks of space. 13 laser light source projectors are aligned perfectly to project onto the dome, bringing the universe to life. A 5.1 cinematic surround sound system with four massive subwoofers allows you to feel the roar of the Saturn V rocket when it launches. It takes a special team to create shows for our planetarium. We're proud to be home to NSC Creative, who make our shows, which are also shown at Planetaria across the world. From holes in a tent to holes in a dome, Planetaria have come a long way over the last hundred years and beyond. Who knows what future Planetaria will let us experience and who they will inspire as we journey to the stars. <laughs>